What is it that makes a great soldier? Is it his brain? Or his heart? While I was growing up, there were a lot of World War II games because everywhere that you would look you would see a game set in that era because everybody was trying to milk the market with that concept and had used almost every asset to get a piece of that pie. And you know what? I couldn't get enough of it because I'm what you call a World War II junkie and I really wish that I had collected all the games that I had played because I'll probably never find them again. Before I had gotten into gaming, I would play with toy soldiers and watch movies because at the time I didn't grasp the concept of gaming just yet. So I would watch Saving Private Ryan and then eventually Band of Brothers, basically any World War II movie that I could get my hands on. I would reenact parts from the film with toy soldiers. Yeah, I know I'm weird, but I was a kid. I just loved the idea of World War II. Every side seemed to be equal in my eyes. Both allies and Nexus had tanks, airplanes, ships. You get the point. Each side were evenly matched. That's why when I first got into gaming, I felt so at home because of how flooded the market was with World War II games. I had seen different aspects of games that I had not thought possible before. But out of all the games that I had played then, the one series that stood out to me was Brothers in Arms. I just loved the camaraderie that was going on between the troops that Baker had under his command. It reminded me a lot of Band of Brothers because of how the story made me care for the characters. So it gave me the incentive to try to keep everyone alive. Even though in the cutscenes, they would just kill off some of the troops that I was so desperately trying to save. But it felt like I was a part of the action. The idea of being squad lead was immeasurable. The only other time that I've gotten that kind of rush is when I played Squad, because I am the one who knocks. I mean, uh, talks. Hey, somebody come over here and dig up this half, quick! I'm putting up a repair station right next to you. True, as soon as you're done with that, follow me. There's an enemy BTR somewhere up here. Uh, Supreme, Supreme, do you know how to drive a striker? Uh, yeah. Hop in the vehicle and push it up to right here where the sword marker is so it could fire on that fucking BTR. Sadly, I'll probably never get the chance to play a newer Brothers in Arms game, as much as I would really want to. I just don't think that Gearbox sees the franchise as profitable as it once was. Now, I've heard through the grapevine that there's a fourth game in production, unofficially it's called Brothers in Arms Battle of the Bulge, and it's supposedly an upcoming game in Matt Baker's storyline, which will be the fourth and final chapter, and it shouldn't be confused with Brothers in Arms Furious 4. The conflict will be focusing on the Battle of the Bulge after the failure of Operation Market Garden and the final push into the heart of Germany. Take everything with a grain of salt, because I don't even think that it's real. Though we may never get another Brothers in Arms game, we as fans can rejoice, because we are getting the next best thing in Hell Let Loose and Postscriptum, and that's the chance to finally command squads in a World War II setting with historical accuracy. The nostalgia feels real. 
So I encourage you to go check out those two games and decide for yourself if you want to join me on the battlefield. So thank you for taking the time to listen, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.